Hello and welcome to Sundays at the Chateau. You might spot something a little bit different today. I'm not actually at the Chateau de la Lande. I'm on safari in South Africa. And if you'd like to see that safari, then I'll be filming on our game drives and you can watch that on Thursday. But today I want to talk about a project that I did with Michael Petherick just before leaving on my holiday, when we tried to make exotic 18th century loungewear for ourselves. As those of you who've seen my costume making vlogs will know, I love making historical costumes. But Michael and I only had a couple of days together and knew we did not have time to launch into a full 18th century ball gown. So we just wanted something glamorous to be able to flounce around our chateaus in. And I got the inspiration for this idea from a book that I found in the gift shop at the Met. I've just popped into the gift shop at the Metropolitan Museum of Art because I can remember that my father and I had just as much fun in here as we did in the rest of the museum and already I found so many books that I want but most of all this one which features lots of clothing inspired by the fashions at Versailles. Michael loves this kind of crazy project so we plan to start as soon as he could get to La Lande. Good morning. I'm easing gently into the day today with a pain au chocolat and my wonderful Versailles book. You might be able to hear my bath running in the background. That's my trick. I start it running before I'm allowed to start reading and having breakfast. Otherwise, I'm capable of lying here all morning. But this way, I know I have to get up to turn it off. Can there be a better start to the day than breakfast in bed with this book? Oh, <laughs> I'm already in heaven. Michael Petherick's coming back today. I'm going to go and collect him at the station in Chateau Roux, and we've got all sorts of exciting projects based on the sumptuous new book that I'm reading about clothes inspired by Versailles. The only annoying thing about my great plan with Michael is that I'm going to have to take my 17th century dress off the mannequin. It is a real pity. Right, Matilda is nude. I'm going to set her up in the dining room and make it into our sewing room. In the book, I found a photo of Brigitte Bardot in the atelier of Christiane Dior, wearing a really weird voluminous robe over a very strange pair of knickerbockers. But I liked the shape of the robe and I decided to change it slightly and make it into a gown. This is the sort of loungewear that I want, something absolutely inspired by the 18th century, but comfortable and that I can just wear during the day, swanning around the chateau. I was looking for a muslin to make a kind of cheese clothy 18th century nighty obviously okay obviously and um, i thought this was quite sweet because then um, obviously this is more modern but i thought we could do it with like a dual twist from the 50s yeah but then i saw it in different colors and it's a much nicer feeling fabric it's cotton whereas the other one's okay. polyester but they only have it in blue and pink dilemma uh, i don't know what do you think michael i think pink actually you know pink if you want to be ridiculous then go for pink Done. Done. Okay, great. So we're now choosing my dress fabric based on how ridiculous I'm going to look. Well, just the idea is ridiculous enough. So we, we, done. We're okay, having pink. we're having the pink we're polka dot. All the pink. <laughs> pink to make the boys. <laughs> you know, you shouldn't be making clothes in the modern day based on Versailles if you're not willing to look a bit silly. I agree. Michael arrived with a photo of a man's 18th century banyan. Banyans were informal house coats that men would wear over their normal day clothes if they were just at home. They were inspired by the Japanese kimonos that had started to be imported by the Dutch East India Company. And they were often worn with a soft silken cap. And I've been obsessed with them for a really long time because I wish that all men dressed like this now. They're so gorgeous. As soon as we arrived at the chateau, Michael was rooting through my fabric cupboard, trying to find something to make his banyan. <laughs> Have you found anything you like, Michael? No, nothing there. Nothing. nothing. At all. No, I can't find anything. Okay, let's abort the project. Mm, it's no point anymore. Uh, Have you just picked up all of my fabrics? No, that's <laughs> just a tiny fragment of it. This one is my favourite. Okay. Oh, but, but we don't have enough. It's a bit short. Oh no, that's such a shame. But... Oh, hang on, no, there's more than I thought there. Uh, 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 uh. It might just, if we're very clever, be enough. There's, like, from shoulder, folded over the shoulder. That is there's stunning. There's two, two full lengths of my body, and the fabric is about two shoulder widths, side to side. It's beautiful. It might just be enough. Yeah. And it'd be a nice way to use up the last piece 
Yeah, that's actually the only piece I've ever had because I got oh. that from the factory shop at Gainsborough Silk Mill where, the, I mean, their fabrics are like 200 pounds a metre. But um, they're so beautiful that I would buy them in the factory shop just in case I end use them roll. one day. Yeah, end of rolls. And so it's been waiting for the perfect project and this could well be it. If that's yeah. enough, what that. If not, there's this, which I don't know. If this is, this looks really expensive. It's the yeah. offcuts of Chambre de Roger. That's totally fine for you to use that if you want to. That's nice, but not as luxurious. As yeah, that. I agree. The other one's more luxurious. And then there's another two. There's this, this, which doesn't, it looks silky, but it feels heavier. Uh, that is a silk damask. It's a silk and cotton mix. It's very thick. Yeah, that's nice. Less blue in it, though, for your eyes. It's very grey, isn't it? Yeah, maybe a bit too grey. Yeah, it's lovely, though. And then the only other thing is... I don't know. This is very silvery, this. Oh, uh, that's my bedroom curtains. This actually seems like it has silver thread Yeah, in it. it does. It does. I love this one. That's my bedroom curtains. I might need to keep this because I've yeah. the, the base of my curtains has got a problem and the leading edge also has yeah. frayed in the keep sun. So I might need it for it repairs. Room, keep that. So that you keep, that you keep. That, I mean, that's only good for upholstering some chairs or something. Look, if that's your favourite... That is my favourite. Then let's go for that. Oh, imagine that. I mean, just draping about in that, like, with candlelight. We're not going to need to imagine it. We're going to see it for real. Well, that actually is quite the back of that. Gorgeous bridges. <laughs> Wouldn't it though? They're like silky beigey. Imagine that as the bridge. It's gold bridges. Oh, if any man much? ever needed gold bridges, how could that ever be I mean, too just much? The normal men wore, wore like just beige. Yeah. You know, like that cushion there. They wore this kind of colour. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of like that anyway. Yeah, it's very similar. Imagine gold ones. That's naughty, isn't it? Yeah, so that is the front. Ooh, oh, that does look good. Doesn't it? Doesn't it just? That's got Michael Petherick oh, written all over it. God, I'd never take it off. Okay, Michael has definitively decided on this fabric. And so we're now, oh, my scissors are terrible, cutting a piece of lining fabric the same length. And the idea of that is that we're going to make the entire thing out of the lining fabric. And we know that that's all the fabric we have on the top fabric. And once we've got the lining fabric to fit perfectly, we'll take it apart again and use it as a template for the silk. Done. There you go. That is gorgeous silk. English silk. We're not using a pattern, so we're trying to work it out as we go along. And Michael and I have just been pinning toile just so that we can see if we can get it to drape nicely. And that's currently the back. It's I really nice. That'll be a bit of a collar, won't it? Yeah, we'll make a collar at the end. You can sort of imagine the sleeves coming off of it now. Looks good. But obviously it won't be as long as that. It'll probably be cut off about there. I've never made menswear before, so we were having a bit of difficulty knowing how each of the pieces fit together. So Michael did some research and found some original French patterns for banyans online. Wow. <laughs> I'm trying to work out a pattern for this. 18th century men's banyan. That's absolutely stunning. It's beautiful, isn't it? Look. Stunning. So that's the back. Yeah. And that is the front. I found this drawing. Yes. And it's a French pattern for a banyan. Patron d'une robe de chambre. So I've drawn this drawing. And actually, you can see here, look, C and C, they're added on the sleeves. Yes. So I've worked out that to create that, you need one piece of fabric that is basically double the height that it needs to be this was something probably quite simple to make in the old days yeah because they would have had you as you said strips of silk were were much narrower yes in the old days. so i guess if this is your banyan what you do what you then do is fold it over yes and that's the front yes and that's perfect. the back makes sense doesn't it yeah it makes perfect sense so basically oh, i wish we had I, time to do it so I'm frustrating going to have to take this back and when i come back from my travels when the chateau opens for the spring uh -huh. come back and bring the banyan I and will. we'll see how it I looks also going to construct which i found a pattern for the britches from silk from gold well beigey gold silk which well, we have you're going to look stunning so i'm gonna have I'm the banyan in beautiful 
silvery blue mm. silk. The breeches, uh, I'm just going to have to find a white shirt that shouldn't be too hard and you might then choose that you want to cut the top fabric only so that you get the pattern going the right way up on both mm -hmm. sides otherwise one side will have the brocade upside down yeah so you can decide that mm -hmm. when you try it mm -hmm. once i've got this i will wander the shadows at night there may even be enough of a scrap of fabric to make the little cap so i'm going to get a bug for this you know once i've made one i'm going, I know. To, I'm going to want to make more i'm counting on it <laughs> We're going to have an 18th century wardrobe. It's such a shame that Michael couldn't stay longer to finish his banyan and I can't wait to see what he does with it. But meanwhile, I've been getting on with my gown, which I did manage to finish on time. Do you want to talk me through why on earth you bought this <laughs> um, very, very sheer polka dot fabric? Well, it won't be sheer because it will be so incredibly ruched up. Ah. That's the idea. And I don't use patterns usually, so I'm trying to work out how to do it. And I think if I have this amount of fabric at the front, yeah. the sort of slightly off the shoulder neckline, uh -huh. and then the same again at the back, my little arms can poke out of the sides, yeah. and I'll just gather it with, with a ribbon. And what is this costume? Where it's does it come from? It's for me from? to lounge around my bedroom. Okay. And it's inspired by? So it's inspired by Brigitte Bardot and Christian Dior's Atelier in the 50s. Ah. So they've left quite a bit of extra. I'm going to do the same, sticking up like that. So the ribbon will go through this yeah. area here. Yeah, and I'm probably not going to make these big sleeves. I want it a little bit simpler. Uh -huh. And then you'll just have to do my hair for me like this. Okay. Every day. Every day. It, yeah, every day. Okay. <laughs> I can't really complain. You've already done my hair for me like this. Yeah, we sorted that out, didn't we? So I'm going to run and get some ribbon. Also, I had bought a little bit of here. I'll show you. I bought some lace. I found this at the local charity shop and this little bag of goodies is some lace that I just found which could be used for clothing. I just like to buy these whenever I can. This was two euros and can be useful if I do a project. I would like to make myself an 18th century nightgown and I think that this could be very good for the 18th century nightgown. Wow. And I think... Around adding, the top? Yeah, just adding a little bit of that maybe along the top like that. Very nice. I'm in a girly mood. Is this what we call a negligee? <laughs> well, I, I think it might be slightly more fabric than you usually get in a negligee, but I'm happy to call it a negligee. <laughs> right, I'll make my little nothing, see how it goes. <laughs> Your little, well, it's quite a lot for a nothing. It, it but... is a lot for a nothing. Yeah. And I have got enough, I think, to do two drops. Yes. So I should cut it in half uh -huh. and get started. Here's a vague idea of how it will look when it's all gathered around. I quite like it. It's super loose. Basically, I'm making a massive pink polka dotted tent to wear. What woman doesn't want that? And now I'm thinking that I might be quite tempted to make it empire waisted. Just add a very high waistline at the end. I'm not sure yet. I think I'll do the top first in the gathers and see how I feel. I'm just creating the top part. So the fold over that okay. will be ruched up. A little pocket all the way along the top. Oh, cute. Is that the one you've already stitched? Yes. So I'm about halfway there. I can get out as I go along. Always. Yeah. <laughs> That's our speciality. I've made this little fold to create the top bit that stands up just all the way along the neckline. And now I'm going to start pleating it up. Now the pleats are going in. I'm just folding each one. It's quite hard to do this and hold the phone, but I'm just folding each one across like this against the next one and securing it with a pin. Progress so far. I've pinned all the little pleats in, so I'm about to go and sew it all together. I like the back like that. Now I'm about to attempt to sew all of those little pleats and at the same time, add the lace that I bought in in my use. I put a ribbon through it. And this is the way that I'll actually do up the nighty. Just hope that it's not too thick for me to sew. I've made the neckline. I think that that's standing up in a similar way to the one in the book. I have no idea what it'll look like on. At the moment, it's a tent without any armholes. I'm just making it up as I go along. But I think the next thing is for me to put a little stitch 
just to hold the ruching in place because it's done up with a little ribbon that's threaded through the lace and so you can ruche it up but I don't want it to go out to its full width every time I'm taking it on and off so I'm just going to stitch the ribbon in some places because I know that the back is right and then I can just ruche up and down the front. That's the plan anyway. Here's my first fitting and let's face it, for something as voluminous as this, I don't think I'm going to need a second. I've made slits for the arms and I am able in the future if I want to, to put a ribbon either around my waist to make it a sort of Grecian look or make it a more empire look like this. But I think for most of the time, I would just like to have it like this so that I can float around the house. It's quite late now, I'm about to go and have dinner, but I'm just finishing off the hemming. I've made it shorter at the front and then a little bit longer at the back so that it very slightly trails on the ground at the back. And tomorrow I will try it on properly. I can't sleep in it, even though it's supposed to be a nightgown, because it will be far too uncomfortable with all that ruching at the top. It's more for lounging around in. For lounging around the house. Michael and I are always really bad influences on each other and end up doing silly projects. Let me know what you think. It's slightly Grecian and I'm really looking forward in the future to just holding it here at the front to make it even more Grecian. But for just lounging around, this is exactly what I wanted. And now I can just settle down with a good book because whilst it might look like a tent, it is extremely comfortable. I hope you enjoyed that video of our slightly ridiculous loungewear. It does go to show the power of dressing. Just dressing up can completely transform your mood. So if you have time to make something like this for yourself, I really recommend doing it. If you would like to join me on safari, then watch the vlog on Thursday. And if you've enjoyed this video about all things Chateau, please subscribe to this channel. But before I go, I want to give a huge thank you to our patrons who make these videos possible and even more importantly, the renovation of our Chateau possible. Thank you so much to the Mackie and Mackies of Lalande, Brian Woodward, Caroline Forster, Brenda Gibbons and Daniela, and to all of our Counts and Countesses of Lalande, whose name you'll see here, and to all of our patrons, you mean such a lot to us and you make such a difference to our lives. Thank you and see you next week. If I'm honest, I'm feeling very Jane Austen right now. I'm just missing a Mr. Darcy. Could that be the sound of his horse approaching? Mm -hmm.